All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So we're in the thick of it, right? Training camp is here, and I could not be more excited. But before we dive in and, and really uh, get into the swing of things with training camp and all of the storylines that come with it, I did want to touch on something that I did find pretty interesting from Mike Girardi, I believe, of the NFL Network. He had a small segment on one of their shows, and he talked a little bit about Garrett Wilson, okay? He said after talking to people around the NFL, they say, why can't Garrett Wilson be one of the next great wide receivers to come out of the draft? You know, think of guys like Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, uh, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddell. You know, why can't Garrett Wilson be one of those big, major impact guys right away in his rookie year? All of those wide receivers mentioned before were, you know, extremely reliable, durable. They racked up tons of yards, tons of uh, tons of touchdowns, and they helped out every single one of those offenses in a major way. He went on to say that both people around the NFL and the Jets are impressed with his intelligence. He always has a plan when he lines up the line of scrimmage. And, you know, obviously that's important. But whenever you're talking about a highly talented individual like Garrett, you know, we can go down the checklist of all the, you know, all of what he brings to the table, whether it's the strong hands, the insanely fast acceleration, uh, the versatility, he can line up on the outside, on the inside, he could hurt you in the short, intermediate, and deep parts of the field, uh, the vertical ability, I mean, and also the size, he's not the biggest guy in the world, 6 foot, 185, 190 pounds, but man, he plays a lot bigger than what his size uh, suggests on paper. And I think that is important. But if you take all that good stuff, right, all the physical, all the tangible attributes, and now you pair that with the intangible, his film study, he, knowing how to attack a defense, knowing where the weak spots are going to be, knowing the pros and cons of, of opposing corners. I mean, he was coached really, really well at Ohio State with guys like Brian Hartline and Ryan Day. You know, Ryan Day's offense is so much fun to watch. It's a lot of deep vertical shots, right, in both the middle and the outside of the field. Uh, they'll hurt you underneath. It, it's kind of funny because they have the mindset. You could just tell by the way they play. They're thinking, we're going to do whatever we want. You know, if, if we want to run the ball th between the tackles every single down and have success, that's what we're going to do. If we want to take 10 shots down the field, that's fine. You might get a couple pass breakups here and there, but we are totally confident in CJ Stroud and the wide receiver depth, the wide receiver stardom to have success. We will connect and good luck stopping us. But circling back to Garrett Wilson specifically here, if you take what he's really, really good at on the field and you pair that with his study habits, with his intelligence that Girardi mentioned, I, I think it's really set up nicely for a solid season and a solid NFL career, rather. Uh, he also goes on to say another person told him that he gives off the same vibes as C.D. Lamb. Okay, now this is kind of where it got really, really interesting for me because look, C.D. Lamb, one of the best, best young wide receivers in football. You know, I know he's not, um, you know, considered a top five guy or a top 10 uh, wide receiver right now in this specific moment, but he has potential to become one in the near future. That's not crazy to say. I mean, this guy, the second he got into the league uh, on a Dallas Cowboy offense with a ton of weapons, by the way, he goes on to have some pretty good numbers, 74 catches, 900. 35 receiving yards, five touchdowns in 16 games. And, you know, you're thinking about that Cowboys offense with, you know, the amount of weapons that they have. Uh, it, it's a lot, you know. So, of course, CD, highly talented guy, comes in as a first round pick. He's going to get his targets, but he maximized his opportunity his rookie year. And then in year two, I mean, he puts out just another outstanding season and, in fact, gets better. Okay. So, you know, if Garrett Wilson is has somewhat of a similar career trajectory as the cd lamb the jets have just found themselves a number one wide receiver and a true target here a true pass catching target that could be a top 10 top 15 wide receiver within two to three seasons i mean it is it really that crazy to say uh and i, I, I honestly you know and again according to mike girardi here from the uh, from the people that he's spoken to uh in, including the jets it has been nothing but great things from Garrett Wilson. You know, this guy at the end of the day was selected in the top 10. You're not selecting a number three guy in the top 10. You're not selecting a guy who ho eh, hopefully he could be good one day. No, you are selecting a guy in the top 10, passing on numerous positions of need. 
you know, at the time, we didn't know what was happening with Jermaine Johnson, his fall, what was happening at, you know, uh, safety. Kyle Hamilton was there. There was also some talks about offensive line, maybe a trade back. There was a lot of question marks, but the Jets locked it at Debo Samuel, that whole situation. Could the Jets deal number 10? They locked it in with Garrett Wilson. Okay, so that tells me right there that not only is he a great fit for the offense, they love his skill set, they love how he translates to the next level, but he's also going to get the targets, the volume, to really have a great opportunity year one to have success. So it's a really interesting uh, comparison here. I love it, you know, especially with the other guys mentioned before, you know, the Justin Jeffersons of the world, the, uh, the Jamar Chases of the world. You know, if Garrett can come in and, and be that lightning rod, this offense is going to look completely different, completely different than what it was last year. Now, of course, we've talked about this a lot, and you guys have pointed out tons of times down below in the uh, in the comment section. Joe Douglas has done his job. You know, he's got better on the offensive line. He completely revamped the tight end position, got a star running back or, you know, a hopeful star running back in Brees Hall. Brought back Zach Wilson's, you know, best friend, uh, it, you know, on and off the field, Braxton Berrios. He and of course Garrett Wilson included, but you know, he's given Zach Wilson the the, the talent. You can only lead the horse to water. You can't make him drink. It's up to Zach Wilson to uh, to distribute the football, to get the ball to the playmakers, to consistently move the chains, to put up points. Yes, it is at the end of the day up to Zach Wilson to be that guy to lead this football team, but to have a guy in Garrett Wilson on your offense, I mean, what more could you ask for in a new acquisition, you know, a brand new wide receiver coming in the building? Not much. Not much. Okay, so I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Do you like that comparison, Garrett Wilson to CD Lamb? Uh, I, d I haven't really thought about it too much, but after thinking about it, I, I, I do actually. And I think... I do think Garrett could have a similar impact uh, to the Jets offense, much like Lamb did to the Cowboys offense. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. And as always, go Jets.